Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. A special welcome to those joining us online. And if you are visiting with us today, we are very glad that you are here. I have a few um, items of gratitude I'd like to lift up today. Um, thanks to the choir for leading our hymns today and singing. Uh, yesterday, we had uh, 14 leaders from the congregation and staff meet uh, in a retreat. And it was very good and very fruitful. So thank you for. Uh, coming and participating in that. Um, and um, last weekend, uh, we had a number of people paint the fellowship hall before our flooring goes in. So thank you very much uh, to everybody who um, helped brighten up the basement. Um, and then finally, um, as you walk in, you may see the 40 and 40 collection, which is our Lent 40 items in 40 days uh, for Lakeview School uh, board games. Um, thank you to those who've um, donated so far and you still have time, Lent isn't over yet. Um, if we can beat our 40, that would be great. Uh, they're board games for Lakeview School to use when there's indoor recess and um, other times that they would need those. So thank you, everybody. Next week, um, it, we have our Holy Week Fest at 845 and that is intergenerational, that means anybody can come. So um, come and join us at 845. There'll be activities for uh, preparation for the Holy Week uh, coming up. And um, of course, it's Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday next week as well. So we'll have our procession with our palms and um, begin the Holy Week observance. Please stand as you are able, and we will begin with the opening litany. <clears throat> King of the poor, to whom belongs the kingdom of heaven, we thank you for your mercy and praise you for your enduring love. King of the sorrowful, who experience the comfort this world cannot give, we thank you for your mercy and praise you for your enduring love. King of the meek, who are destined to inherit the earth. We thank you for your mercy. And praise you for your enduring love. King of the hungry and thirsty. To whom are given heavenly bread and wine. We thank you for your mercy. And praise you for your enduring love. King of the merciful. Who receive far more than they ever give or expect. We thank you for your mercy and praise you for your enduring love. King of the pure in heart, who see God where others see wilderness and despair, we thank you for your mercy and praise you for your enduring love. King of the peacemakers, who receive the right to be called children of God, we thank you for your mercy and praise you for your enduring love. King of persecuted believers, who rejoice to be counted worthy of suffering for Christ's sake. We thank you for your mercy. And praise you for your enduring love. Thanks be to you, God of Christ, our wounded King, for everything he has taught us, for the humble path he has shown us, and for all he has suffered for us and the whole world. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 408, Come Thou Almighty King. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God of truth, too often we bend truth to fit our needs. Show us how to recognize and follow your truth. Show to us by the love and life of your Son, Jesus, in whom we pray. Amen. May be seated for the lessons, and I invite Sarah to read our scripture. Good morning. Good morning. We will read Psalm 145 responsibly. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words, and gracious in all his deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In John's Gospel, the story of Jesus and Pilate presents two different ways of exercising power. Through the world's way of force, or with God's way of love. A reading from the 18th and 19th chapters of John. (coughs) Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, if this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, 
Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, here is your king. They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who calls us to the truth 
of God's kingdom. Amen. I learned some new things about Pontius Pilate this week as I was preparing for this sermon. I learned that his headquarters as governor of Judea was actually in Caesarea on the Mediterranean and not in Jerusalem. I also learned that in Caesarea in the ancient Colosseum they have found a flagstone with his name inscribed on it along with the emperor of the time. So his place in history has been solidified by the archaeologists. And I also learned that since his headquarters was in Caesarea, his trip to Jerusalem usually came during Jewish festivals, and he would go there to try and keep the peace and work with the leaders to keep that peace. History records Pilate as a rather brutal and cruel governor. At one point, he is even summoned back to Rome to answer to the emperor for his cruelty. But this is the, not the pilot that we see in the scripture today. The pilot we just heard about in John's gospel doesn't know what to do with Jesus. He isn't decisive or overly cruel. In fact, he wants to release him. And Pilate and Jesus in their encounters with one another go back and forth asking each other questions and never really answering them. Jesus and Pontius Pilate come from two totally different worldviews, two totally different places, two totally different allegiances. In John, Jesus is in total control, not the Roman Empire. Jesus knows exactly who he is. He's the son of God. He knows exactly where he came from. He came from God the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he knows exactly why he is here, to bring the truth of God's love and salvation to the world. Pilate has no experience with the God of Jesus, no experience with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who sent Jesus, the God who loves the world so much, the God who wants nothing more than to save the world. Pilate only knows the Roman world, the Roman gods, a world of conquest, a world of peace through military might, a world of privilege built on the backs of those who are conquered and oppressed, a world that has its own set of gods and goddesses and demigods who aren't much interested in saving the world. These are the two men who meet in Pilate's office or his headquarters in Jerusalem, one with the power of the world at his fingertips and one with the power of God in his very being. Is Jesus a king? Not like the kings the world knows, not like the kings we know, certainly not like the Roman emperor wielding armies and conquering peoples and taking land. No, this king kneels and washes his disciples' feet. This king willingly dies to save the very world that he was a part of creating the world that he loves so much, yet puts him to death. This king is raised by his father God so that all may have life, so that all may have that new life. This king loves you and wants you to belong to the truth. Did you notice that word in our reading today? When we read this passage in Bible study, it was the first time that I really noticed that word. 
belongs to the truth. Jesus says to Pilate, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This isn't a factual, knowledgeable, brainy kind of truth that Jesus is bringing. This is a relational truth. A truth where Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. A truth where he is the good shepherd and we are his flock and hear his voice and follow him. A truth where the Father is in Jesus and Christ is in the Father and they are one and they are also in us. A truth where the Holy Spirit walks alongside of us and advocates for us. This is the truth Jesus brings to the world. That's also the kind of kingdom Jesus has, that God has. Not a kingdom of conquest and armies and violent power like we're seeing happening in the world right now. Not a kingdom of land acquisition and wealth and consumption, but a kingdom of love, a kingdom of forgiveness, a kingdom of salvation, liberation, and transformation, a kingdom of belonging, a kingdom, if you will. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus taught us to pray. And the worldly kingdoms don't like God's kingdom. They don't know what to do with it, like Pilate didn't know what to do with Jesus. Was anyone following this week the royal tour of William and Kate in the Caribbean? Anybody? No? A little bit? <laughs> there was a lot of fashion commentary on that one, but there was also something else happening on that tour. Much like our own country, there were also the protests and the calls for the United Kingdom to admit its part in the history of the slave trade and to make some kind of acknowledgement of the privilege they and we enjoy because of this history and to begin to work toward reconciliation of some kind. This is what God's kingdom would call for. Yet we either don't know what to do with it or we don't want to acknowledge it and face it. Like the pilot we see in John, in the face of the world's kingdom, Jesus ends up dying for it. I think we all have times in our lives when we are like pilot as well. We don't know what to do with Jesus. We don't know what to do with this servant king who calls us to serve others, with this kingdom of love that seems to counter the world that we live in. What do we do with this king who calls us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, who calls us to forgive seven times 70, who calls us to Feed the hungry, heal the sick, set the prisoner free, comfort the grieving, and bring peace to a warring world. And to do this not merely out of charity, but through actual transformation. What do we do with this king? We listen to his voice, and we follow. Jesus said to Pilate, those who hear my voice belong to the truth. We live and love in the way that God's truth calls us. No matter how challenging, no matter how difficult, this is the truth we belong to. And when we live it out, we will begin to see God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So what do we do? It's our mission. We share the story of Jesus in our own lives so that all may experience God's love in their lives. Amen. Our hymn is number 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Hang on, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we have the wrong hymn. We're on Beneath the Cross of Jesus, 338. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I, I, know. I think I know that song, but I don't know what number it is. That's better. <laughs> this time, I would invite anybody who wants to share uh, a milestone to come on up, and Patty's going to look online, yes? Okay. And you can use that, that mic right there. Last night, we had a couple birthdays, so those are in here. Sarah? <clears throat> Um, I just wanted to um, say Shelby isn't here this morning, um, a little bit worn out. Yesterday she participated in their solo and ensemble competition and she sang an A-level um, solo um, and received a one, which is the high, highest rating from middle school. And she also sang a duet um, with another student and received a one on that as well. So um, I'm, you know, Grateful to God for her talent and for hard, her hard work. And um, some of you may not know that she is actually, um, she and my mother-in-law are planning to go with Exaud to Tanzania in August. Um, and um, I know she, I'm not sure what she's singing yet, but I know she's probably going to be singing in May for the fundraiser for, um, for Tanzania here, so you all might have another opportunity to hear her sing. Thanks. Do we have anybody else that participated in solo and ensemble? Yeah? Okay. Great. How'd you do? Good. Good. All right. I'm putting a stone in for you. Okay. Hi. What do you guys want to share? Do you want to? Oh, yeah? Okay. It's our dog's birthday. <laughs> All right. Okay. Genevieve, you want to grab a stone and put that in there? All right. Thank you very much.
Steve? So on Tuesday, my lovely wife retired. <laughs> after after years <laughs> of, of being a therapist and a psychologist and helping people work through their challenges and their issues, and we talked about it the other day, and uh, we think she did maybe. 2,500? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 2,500 people? 2,500 people over a year? Yeah. So, um, a, lot of, a lot of goodbyes over the last month. A lot of people coming to thank her for all the help that she's given them. So uh, thank you for helping the community. Thank you, Sandy. And Lisa, okay. Uh, last night we celebrated my mother's 79th birthday. Oh. Nice. nice. <laughs> Frank, is there any online? Sandy, no? I'm not dressed for this, but the spirit moved me. That's okay. <laughs> um, God doesn't worry about that. <laughs> in the uh, gospel reading and service this morning, I had a solemnity and a sadness about what happened to Christ that I've never had before. So I think it's become much more real to me. And, uh, you know, my journey back to faith isn't that long. And so uh, I'm really glad, glad for this. Hey, do you want to put a stone in, Frank? Anybody else? Okay, please stand as you are able and we will enter into prayer. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. We give thanks today for birthdays of all types and shapes and sizes and years. We celebrate the years, the milestones that birthdays mark in our lives, the lives lived, the memories made, we also give thanks for other milestones like retirement and solo and ensemble contest and all the people that we encounter and influence in our lives and how we can make such a difference when we are focused on your love. And we give thanks for journeys of faith, no matter how long if you've been on that journey for a short time, a long time, if you've strayed from the path and come back, it's all part of the journey of growing closer to God, closer to Jesus, and walking with the Holy Spirit. We give thanks for these milestones. Merciful God. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. I give thanks for the leaders that gathered yesterday. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. We especially lift up Ukraine and Russia. 
make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick, especially Bruce, Tony, Randy, Jim, Anne, Paul, Ray, Shannon, and all those that we name either aloud in our hearts or in the comments. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued, especially those of the poor, the meek, the grieving, the very young and the very old, the homeless, the unemployed, and the incarcerated. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will be bringing the offering forward, and as always, you can place that in the offering plate on your way in or out. Um, we are also posting online our Tithely link, if you'd like to give in that way online. Um, the instructions for that are also in the front of your bulletin. Please pray with me. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a moment and share God's peace with those around you and with those online. Congratulations again. Does anyone need communion elements? If so, raise your hand. Looks like we're good. God's kingdom is not of this world. Our king does not look like the kings of this world. The truth is before us in the grain of the field and the fruit of the vine. With this hope, we remember that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus sat at a meal with his disciples. It was the Passover meal, a meal remembering your act of liberation. At this meal, Jesus took bread and he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood, a new covenant poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. At this time, you can take your communion elements and take off that first layer. You will find the wafer there. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take off that second layer. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace and peace. Amen. Amen. Pray with me. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 398, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. Jesus Christ, so all may experience God's love.
that's a hard decision to make. Yeah. I mean, I retired last June, and it's yeah, it's it's just it is. You say, is it should I or should not? You know. Yeah, and it's like you're you're this one day and then one yeah, day, you know, it's just, yeah. It is. Isn't that weird? Oh, it was because yeah. I, I and I, I I met with some retired friends from Russia the other day, and my one friend said to me, "Did you feel after your retired life?" Oh, I didn't. I said, "Yeah, I did. For a little while, I did." But she said, "Be careful. If she's been retired for two years. She said, don't look through those rose-colored glasses. Try to remember. Try to remember the bad times and the good times. So it." I did the right thing. So I thought that was and good it needs advice. Time, you know, oh, it does. Everybody, everybody told me it takes about a year because I'll be happy to say I worked 35 plus years in either education or downtown and other jobs. And being in that stressful position for so many years, and all of a sudden, it's a whole new life. Yeah. So it does. I think it takes your body and mind. Yeah. A while, mm -hmm. but um, I'm still waking up. Early. Yeah, I mean, I know. Well, if you ever want something to do, I'm, I'm around. So okay. seriously, give yeah. me a call and yeah. give Mark a call. He don't mind. See, I have to take care of this guy. I told her she can call me anytime now that she's. Oh, well, you can. Um, you know. You were asking. You were planning. <laughs> she was. She and was. you didn't say a word. You didn't give any glimmer. Other than you. <laughs> 